What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new chess trap. In today's video, yes, you read it in the title right. Today I'm going to show you an ultimate defense against the London system. And now you will not be scared against the London system. With this ultimate defense, you will demolish and crush the London system. Let's go. D4. Knight f6. Knight c3. D5. And now bishop to f5. Bishop to f4. So this is the London system. Here there are a lot of moves. Well, we are going to play this move. C5. Striking in the center. You can also play first e6 and then go c5. Both are moves correct, but I'll return to go c5 directly. After c5, white plays the move e3, supporting the center. We go knight c6, c3. So white has successfully built the pyramid, the London pyramid. Now we'll go e6, solid defying our center, and white goes knight b to b2. Well, here our main. I I think everyone knows this. If you don't know, then you can learn this is the basic setup against the London. Uh, so till now you'd be like, wait, there's nothing special, right? It would come because when we play these moves, our opponent will be like, okay, my opponent doesn't has any special crap. He's playing normal. I would be also normal, right? Except not. There's gonna come something. The main line goes with bishop g3, and the point is, if you take their bishop, then they take with the edge pawn, and they get this rook pile open, and whenever we castle, I mean, they have an attack. Let me show you. So takes, takes. The point is, when we castle, they can be super, super violent. I mean, yes, and you see why this is better. I mean, this rook is so dynamic. It's just a very scary position. So after bishop g3, my recommendation is to castle first. And when they go bishop d3, we play this very tricky move, rook to e8. And from this move, our trap starts. This is the starting of our tricky business. Rook e8, this, the point of this move is to go e5, which is a very strong move. Many strong, uh, I mean, players have also fallen for this trick. Uh, so the best move here is to go knight e5, which, will, which we will cover. But wait. Let me tell you, this is not the main trap. The main trap is gonna come after a few moves. Okay? So this is not the main trap. This is the sideline trap here. So, knight e5 is the main move. But if you're. If, but many players don't play knight e5. Many strong ones do, and they play something else. In one of my own games, my opponent played the move castle. It was a very strong 2100 player. Uh, and he castled. And uh, black is just completely gonna. I mean, it's just completely better. And here you can see it's minus 0 0.4. Because here we're gonna play this move. Bishop takes g3. After h takes g3, here comes our point, and we reveal our secret plan with the move e5. Now you will be like, wait a second. Why does this pawn up, right? Except not. We have this move e4, and there's a poke and. One of the pieces gone. So that's why white cannot take this pawn or can't ignore this. He has to do something about this pawn. In my game, my opponent thought about all this and he took the pawn. I took back with the knight. He took back my knight. And then I went rook takes e5 and then he went knight f3. So his point was he took the knight so that he could get a tempo on my rook with knight f3. He thought I'm just gonna go back and it would be a relatively normal position. Yes, black would be better because uh, black has two center pawns which are very strong, but it's fine. But here I shocked my opponent and played a very aggressive move. I think you've guessed it. Rook to h5 and now my opponent was, that, was scared. I mean, he was like, wait a second, what is happening? My king side is in the super attack. Here my opponent played the move. So he played the move bishop to e2, trying to attack my rook, and I went bishop g4, pinning that knight. Now my opponent did a desperate try, he played the move knight to d2, trying to trade a few pieces, and I traded, I mean, I just took the bishop. Bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, and here I played a very cunning move. So I can see my rook is attacking the, I mean, my rook is there in the edge file, but like, the rook alone cannot do anything. The queen has to come. 
But how will the queen come? I mean, it's two birds up. My queen has to come here. And if I directly go there, you would guess it, right? And thus, I did a very cunning plan. I played the move queen to b6, attacking b2. He played rook b1, defending. And now I played the move queen to e6. So my plan is I want to go d4. So if my opponent doesn't like anything, I'll go d4 and black is just completely winning. Almost, it's almost losing position. It's more than almost plus two. Thus, my opponent supported my queen and played the best move, rook to e1, giving support to the queen. And here I revealed my tricky cunning plan with knight g4. I could not play knight g4 at that point because my knight was unprotected. And my queen was on d8 and b6. But now it's protected and now I can my opponent saw that my queen is coming to f6 for a brutal mate. In chess, when you like to start getting attacked, you get panic. And when you get panic, you do wrong moves and lose the game. And that's what happened with my opponent. My opponent was struck here and he did a desperate try with the move f3, trying to remove a piece from the game. And here I enrolled deadly stuff. After my one move, my opponent resigned the game. Can you find that move? An amazing move. Let me give you a hint. It's mate and four. Pause the video and find that amazing sequence. Are you ready? Let's go. It's the unbelievable sacrifice. If you think it's queen at six, you are actually wrong. And why is winning? Because there's actually nothing. I mean, white is protected so nicely. There's a big nice kingdom and there's nothing. So what to do? Here we have to sack a piece of the rook h1. My opponent resigned the game. Only one move. King takes h1. After queen f6, king g1, queen h2, king f1, and queen h1. It's a brutal move. Thus, now I have shown you that if you if your opponent misses that move, just that idea of knight e5, he's probably very bad. I mean, the position is just too bad, and you're gonna lose the game. Thus, knight e5 is a very important move. Here we're gonna take the bishop, I mean, take the knight with the bishop, and it doesn't really matter with what he takes. The main move is d takes e5. Uh, like white takes with any piece, he'll almost reach the same position, same crappy position. Now we are coming to our main trap. Let's say black, white takes with bishop takes e5, take the bishop, it takes knight d7. Black is just better, I mean, that knight bishop is gone and we're attacking this pawn. After f4, it's the same position. So now, you know what? Let's go to the other variation, which is the main line. Both the both the positions will have the same trap, so don't worry. After d takes e5, we're gonna play this move. Knight to d7, defending, I'm sorry, attacking the pawn, sorry, e5. Now white has to defend this pawn. Can you find the move which is correct and which is wrong? So, normally to defend e5, there are two moves, knight f3 or f4. There's also one creative move which I'll tell you in the end. So, but one, uh, one of the moves is correct and one of them is just blunder. I mean, it's a big blunder. And if you thought about the move f5 and f4, Congratulations, you have fallen to the trap because f4 is a completely wrong move. When I check this position in the online database, it shows that f4 and knight f3 have been played equal number of times like 15 16 times, both of them. And the creative move, let me show tell you, it's queen to b1. So let's start with queen to b1. If you're open to this queen to b1, it's just so tricky. The point is, the queen and the bishop are backing down on f7. Now you have a couple of moves. The best solid thing is just go g6 and be happy with the game. I mean, super nice. And now if white plays f4, then it's not the same trap. So queen b1 is a very solid one, but it's so tough to find. It's just super tough. You can also continue with this move. Knight c takes e5, and if the bishop takes f7, king h8, and bishop goes back, this, according to the engine, is fine. I mean, it's plus 0.4, which is relatively normal. 
but which is relatively equal, but it's just a bit like the king is a bit exposed and if we talk about the practicality of this point, I think it's not I mean from a human practical standpoint, this is a bad position. I mean a bit scary position for black. So this room come and you go g6 very solid. Uh, if you if your opponent plays knight f3, the tricky stuff at the end. If your opponent plays knight f3, which is also a very solid move, then we can just play queen c7 and we can just pressure this e5 pawn. And this is also completely fine position for black. Uh, uh, we can even take this pawn. I mean, there are a lot of options for white. But I can again try this move queen d1, we can go d6. As a feature, we can try f6, we can just have the bishop, rooks. I mean, it's a fine position for black. Yes, the white's a bit better, slightly better, but it's fine. Now, let's go to what we have come to this show. I mean, you have clicked this video for this trap, right? Let's go. When white plays f4, which is a very popular move and very, I mean, endearing move, it looks like to play that move. It's a very intimidating move. Here we're gonna play the and now a tricky business starts with this move c4 attacking the bishop. It doesn't matter. It goes to b1 or c2. Let's say bishop c2. It doesn't really matter. Can you find the move which you're gonna play? Yep, it's going to b6. Unbelievable move, and we attack two spots and white can't defend both of them. So now I'm gonna show you three moves here which I can play. The best move is castle, which you have to do and. If white plays rook to b1, defending b2, then we're just gonna take the e3 pawn at the queen e2 to the straight. Black is just completely better. I mean, there's a pawn now, white has lost the right to castle. Black is just completely better. I mean, you can play the moves like knight c5, knight d3, and you can play like f6 and take with the knight. You just improve your pieces. The main thing in this, you have to improve the knights. You have to really engage your knights in some work like knight d7, knight f5 and it's just a completely winning position for black as you can see here it's more than plus one if your opponent defends this e3 pawn and plays bishop f2 then we just take the b2 pawn and I mean black is just that what should I say to like rook b1 this pawn here we'll be confused what pawn should we take like a2 or c3 for the offline Better is it? Eight. I'm oh, sorry. C two. Better C three. If I want to play like this move, okay. This is a nice trap which White can set. Rook C one. It's very tricky. The point is, if you take this pawn, boom, we lose our queen. So you have to be like be safe. You know, I mean, if you take this pawn, I mean, it's fine. But you don't have that much advantage, and White can attack. You will lose like E four and all. So here in this position, my recommendation is you can play like c5, which is a really nice move. Trying to go d3 or e4, stopping e4 too. You can play moves like b6, b5, also can go for g6, which is a completely fine move. Now let's go to the main move, the best move, castles. And why does like, dude, you have to take one pawn? It's your choice, you take it. Now, always remember, in this situation, you always have to take this. B2 pawn. Never take the E pawn if you have a choice. Because when we take the E pawn, black has, yes, I mean, why is this pawn down? But there's no problem for white. And if now I check with the Indian, it's actually white is better because white had the problem with the double pawn. Black is just removed it. And white is just completely better. I mean, why is this gonna attack with the F5, the F6? And black is just ruined the position for himself. So here we're gonna go for queen takes b2. Again, white has a lot of moves. I can again play this move rook c1, uh, setting that trap. Here we're gonna play the move g6, which is my, like, according to me, the best move. My recommendation. You can just stop that forever. And now I can try this move e4, trying to counter attack. You you might take c3. I mean, it's fine, but again, there are problems. I mean, takes, takes, bishop takes, g6, queen e3, bishop f3, queen takes f4, bishop, uh, I mean, bishop g3 is just too much. I mean, it's just too much. I mean, 
It is for humans, it's a bit difficult, so I would not recommend that thing. What I'll say, yeah, A21 is also hanging, I mean, you can take it, but again, you have to be perfectly sure, because your white is better. What? Because the thing is, white has attack. This is the whole point. That's why in this position, I recommend you to play this thing, knight to b6. White would be very tempted to play this move a4, trying to attack the knight, and then he'll destabilize the center. Well, here we're gonna play this move d4. If a5, then d3 is a very strong move. Even d takes c3 is a, is a much stronger move than that. So here, uh, it often has to take the pawn, and here we're gonna take the knight. And if now your opponent tried this move, a5, then we have a counter shot. Can you find this amazing bloody move? Hint, it's with the queen. An amazing brutal move. It is the unbelievable sacrifice. Queen takes c1. The point is after queen takes c1, we can play knight e2 check. If king f2, we take the queen. And if rook takes c1, we can just move our knight. I mean, just sharing, we are just an exchange of that. But black, white would try this move to do some stuff, but there's nothing. We just play knight d3, take, take, some, some completely fine position. And black is again exchange up. If king h1, which is also the same thing, I mean, it's the same, but let me just show you. If this, then again, we just move the knight. If a takes b6, then it's knight b2, and I don't know, just takes, 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 and after the whole transaction, black is completely better, and it's just winning, I mean, it's just an exchange up, and the big bad point is, he has two passed pawns, and this is very bad, yes, I can take it, but the position can fall very quickly, I mean, you have moves like, Rook a2, uh, I can move the bishop and play bishop b5. If this pawn wasn't here, it's super interesting. Why does this completely lose it? Because you can play like rook c7 and play like bishop a6, but it doesn't matter. Overall, black is just completely winning. Yeah, and in this position, yes, I mean, the game is the game is quite over at this point. Only. Black is just completely better. So guys, this was the ultimate defense to beat the London system. Now I'm sure you are not scared. You're not afraid of the London system. The London system removed your skill. Now you are gonna remove London system skills because of your skill. I mean, you are gonna remove London system from yourself because of your skill. I think now we should end the video. Uh, this was the just a crushing crap against the London system. I'll meet you in the next video. But before ending the video, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, subscribe right now. We are very close to 200 subscribers. And I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, be safe, be healthy, keep watching. Incredible. Cheers.